Welcome to section 4, ACA Persistence. In the previous section, we discussed the difference between ACTA reference, ACTA path, and ACTA selection. We also introduced routing in ACA and how to replace ACTA behavior via become, unbecome, and FSM. Now, let's start our next topic. In this section, we will take a look at Overview on ACA persistence and architecture. We will then implement a persistent actor and play with it. After that, we will look at persistent FSM. And finally, we will introduce persistence query, which is a new experimental module in ACA 2.4. Let's start with the introduction to ACA persistence. In this video, we will take a look at what's a persistent actor, and what's the difference between a normal actor and a persistent actor. Then we will discuss the architecture of ACA persistence. Let's start. Let's imagine we have an actor that contains a counter variable which increments after receiving a message. But if this actor crashes, we will lose the internal state. There are many cases where we need to retain the internal state as well. We need actors that can persist the internal state. When the actor crashes for some reason, we need to make sure his state is stored at a safe place, such as a database or a file. And after the actor restarts, it can read the last persisted state and start from there. ACA uses a very similar idea in ACA persistence. The key concept behind ACA persistence is that only the changes to an actor's internal state are persisted, but never its current state directly. This means that we don't store the internal state, but we store events from which the internal state can be recovered. The basic idea behind ACA persistence is quite simple. A persistent actor receives a new message that calls a command which is first validated if it can be applied to the current state. If validation succeeds, events are generated from the command, representing the effect of the command. These events are then persisted and after successful persistence, used to change the actor's state. When the persistent actor needs to be recovered, only the persisted events are replayed for which we know they can be successfully applied. Now, let's introduce the architecture of ACA persistence. Persistent actor. This is a persistent stateful actor. It can persist events to a journal and can react to them in a thread-safe manner. It can also be used to implement both the command and the event-sourced actors. When such an actor is started or restarted, journaled messages are replayed to that actor so that it can recover its internal state from these messages. Persistent view. It is a persistent stateful actor that receives journaled messages that have been written by another persistent actor. A view itself does not journal new messages. It instead updates the internal state only from a persistent actor's replicated message stream. This is deprecated from ACA 2.4 and we should use persistence query instead. We will discuss persistence query in detail in the last video of this section. Async write journal, a journal that stores a sequence of events sent to a persistent actor. An application can control which messages are journaled and which are received by the persistent actor without being journaled. The storage backend of the journal is pluggable. The default journal storage plugin writes to the local file system. And of course, this is not for production. For production, ACA recommends Cassandra or JDBC backend driver. Snapshot store. A snapshot store persists snapshots of a persistent actor. Snapshots are used for optimizing recovery times. The storage backend of a snapshot store is pluggable. The default snapshot storage plugin writes to a local file system. You can check the full documentation for persistence from here. And this is a link for Cassandra Journal. And this one is for JDBC.